Well, we're off. The British rulers never encouraged nationalism. India, with its size and all its diversity, had never existed as an independent nation state. But as early as 1885, an Indian official put his faith in the railways as a possible means to this end. And this is what the official said. If India is ever to achieve solidarity, it must be by means of the railways. There are so many questions. What did it really take to build this railway? And the biggest question of all, why were the railways important, first of all, in uniting India, and then finally, in the end, dividing it? Seven hours into our journey, and we've traveled just 290 miles. We're now entering the agricultural heartland of India. This is the great fertile Ganges plain. It looks, it looks green. It's, it's, it's amazing. It looks beautiful, but building a railway across this plain was an enormous challenge. Swampy marshland for much of the year, and then a raging overflow from the Ganges during the monsoon. The track had to be raised on embankments. But this boggy plain was also the home to the great curse of the railway builders, malaria, and building embankments only created more stagnant water in which the malaria-carrying mosquitoes could breed. I'm now in Bihar state. It's always been one of the poorest areas of India and one of the most troublesome. Tourists are put off by the long-running and violent campaign mounted by left-wing guerrillas who call themselves Maoists. And one of their main targets is the railways. My train arrives at Jamalpur two hours late. As I slept, there was a major incident just a few miles along the track. Well, this is why we were delayed for two hours. Train movement paralysed, it says, as Maoists blow up the tracks. It was an explosion on the line, not our line, thankfully, but on a line adjoining us. And that put out the system for quite some time. It's interesting that it's still uh, uh, absolute guaranteed point that if you want to attack the government, first attack the railways. Jamalpur owes its existence to the railways. It was built for railway workers in 1862. Even today, 10,000 rail employees and their dependents live in the town. The British have long since gone, but ghosts are everywhere. Many of the road signs hark back to the Raj. Queen's Road, but no longer a queen clipped hedges, the manicured lawns. Everyone knows his place. This is the home of a senior mechanical engineer. And the empire was built like that, on rules and regulations meticulously observed. From the viceroy downwards, continuity was the key. Not too much flashy individualism. That might rock the boat. The rulers of the Raj could boast that these railway towns, there were quite a few of them, would bring progress and prosperity. But they were strictly divided on racial lines. Indians could work on the railways and as servants, but they couldn't live in this British part of town. That would be unthinkable.
The architect of this great rail network, Governor General Lord Dalhousie, would later claim his railway revolution in India had unleashed the engines of social improvement. He believed in the greatest good for the greatest number of people. By transforming Indian society, the British, he was convinced, would bring material progress and development to India. And Lord Dalhousie believed his great railway project could play a major part in transforming society. And this is the Anglican church, which I must say looks rather forlorn. That's the sign, St. Mary's Church, Jamalpur, established 1867. And the laundry service, well, I think that's up to the parishioners. For many years, Christian missionaries had been active in India. Any town plan designed for the senior rail staff wouldn't be complete without its churches. This is the Catholic Church of the railway workers. About 200 families regularly worship here. There's also an Anglican church and a Baptist church. But if you look in here, this is the railwayman at prayer. The 19th century children's almanac, every boy's book of railways and steamships, left no room for doubt. Into whatever part of the world the white man penetrates, it said, he takes the gospel with him. So the trains brought the word, and the word was God. It's very moving, so much that's familiar, the figure of Christ, the altar, the structure, the mass, and so much that's unfamiliar, that warmth, that informality that's particularly Indian. And what we're seeing here in this railway town is the way that this technology came into India, but all sorts of other things came too with the European rulers. Religion, obviously, technology, and India managed to absorb all these influences, and instead of rejecting them, they all became part of India, and that's what gives India this extraordinary richness. Sixty years since independence, and another influence is still deeply felt in Indian society. Millions of people learn the English language, more so than under the Raj. But in Jamalpur, it was not the church that ran the school, it was the railways. The railways permeate every aspect of life here. In towns like this, people were brought together from all over India. Gujaratis and Tamils, as well as Bengalis, came to live side by side as never before. The people here are railway, through and through. They're in no doubt what they owe to the railways. Are you, are you from all over India? All parts of India. Yeah. From West Bengal, from UP, from Andhra Pradesh, from uh, Kerala, from uh, every parts of India. W what do you do on the railways? I'm starting to be an engineer. In you want to be an engineer, yeah? yeah? And does your father work on the railways? Yeah, my father is my father. This is your, <laughs> right, this is your father. <laughs> and what for you is the attraction of working on the railways? Whole people, I think, uh, just belong to this railway. Belong to the railway? Yeah. And you want to belong to the railway? Yeah, of yeah. course, I want to. And if you have a son, what will you say to your yeah, son? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. So it'll go on and on and on. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, I see. It's like a, just a family, because the generation to generation, it, uh, I think, carry on to. Carries on, yeah. yeah. Do you think of yourselves as, first of all, as railwaymen? Is that what you think of yourselves as? We are asking rail service. 